Trigonometric identities explained by Justin de Souza. The learning objectives of this lesson are to use trigonometric identities to find trigonometric values and to use trigonometric identities to simplify expressions. The keywords of this lesson are trigonometric identity, quotient identity, reciprocal identity, Pythagorean identity, cofunction identity, negative angle identity, and trigonometric equations. Uh, we do not need to go through all these. These, we will just look at them, but these are used in the coming lessons. For this particular lesson, we will be seeing trigonometric quotient, reciprocal, and Pythagorean identity, and trigonometric equations only. To find trigonometric values, first of all, let's understand what is a trigonometric identity. You can see over here, there's an equation over here. If this is a set formula in the sense, if this equation will be true for set values, then it's an identity. See, the most common identity we know uh, is tan theta is equal to sine theta divided by cos theta, isn't it? Now, for defined theta value, this both the sides will be equal. If you take a, a particular theta value over here and the same one over here, both the sides will be equal. So this is an identity. Now, if you're thinking carefully, you, you must know whenever there's a rational functions, the denominator cannot be equal to zero. Yes, even in this case, uh, the theta cannot be equal to whatever the theta value makes cos zero. That is 90, 180 and so on. Okay. But other than that, all the values, this is an identity. Now, if at all you provide a value where both the sides are not equal, then the identity is proven false. Doesn't matter how many times it's true, but even a single counterexample, even one counterexample, which will prove the identity wrong, will, uh, uh, will tell it it's not an identity. That means that equation won't be an identity. So that's about it. Now we will look into the formulas. These are the basic trigonometric formulas, isn't it? So we have come across this before. That is tan theta is sine by cos. What is cot? Cot is the reciprocal of tan. Now, one thing, you, you, you know the sine and cos and the basic ones. I'll write it out. Sine is equal to opposite by hypotenuse. This is what we have studied many times before. Cos is adjacent by hypotenuse. And then we have tan that is equal to See, this one can be written as sine and cos, but in terms of over here, it will be opposite by adjacent. This was when we had triangles. Now, the same thing, these can be related to each other. See, tan, if you divide sine and cos, you're going to get opposite by adjacent. Or you can directly remember tan is sine by cos. Now, what about the reciprocals? The reciprocal of tan is very simple. Tan theta is 1 by cot or cot is 1 by tan. It's the same thing. You take cot over here, bring tan over here. But what about sine and cosine? That is cos. Here, if it is s, then in the reciprocal, it can't be s. It will be c, s, c, cosecant. Whereas if it is c, then it can't be c over here. It should be s, secant theta. This is how we can remember these. Okay. Now, whenever we have reciprocal, the denominator cannot be zero. That is uh, known over here also. See that cos can't be equal to zero, your sine can't be equal to zero. And then Pythagorean identities. We, we know these generally, we know these also from before. This is something important. We will look into Pythagorean identities only in this lesson. The other ones we will look into the uh, few, uh, next coming lessons in the coming videos. From this, we can easily derive the others as well. Now, it is very important to remember to solve this problem. Cos squared theta plus sine squared theta is 1, whereas tan squared plus 1 is secant squared theta. And whereas over here, we know tan reciprocal is cot, cot squared theta, but don't think, okay, secant reciprocal is cos. No, uh, secant and cosecant are the other two groups, right? So where it's tan, it will be cot squared theta plus 1. Instead of secant, we have cosecant theta. Here, instead of this, it becomes C and C.
okay so we will leave the other two for now which you'll learn more in the next video now one more thing before we start problems i have to i've mentioned this before whenever we have the denominator we cannot make this equal to zero i just remembered when i told a while ago i told 90 180 i'm sorry it's not 180 because 180 is not zero it's 270 okay so whichever angles you know the cost uh graph right it starts from 0 90 over here it keeps on going wherever it becomes 0 those are avoided so that's about it before we go to the problems we will quickly look into the cast diagram this is a very important thing what exactly is cast diagram now imagine you have a coordinate plane 0 90 180 270 degrees right there is a rule where the trigonometric functions are positive or negative if it's within 0 to 90 degree, it doesn't matter which trigonometric function, whether it's cos, sine or tan, they're all positive over here. But as you move from the first quadrant, this is the first quadrant, to the second one, only sine is positive over here between 90 to 180. If it is cos, it will be negative. And if it is uh, cos negative, then tan also will be negative, right? That's the thing. And what about the third quadrant? Here, sine and cos are negative. So what happens is when you get tan theta, it will be minus sine, minus value. Minus, this is not the exact way to write. I'm just telling it will be a value. It will be negative, negative. They'll cancel out and it will become positive for tan. So tan is positive only when sine and cos are negative. And lastly, if cos is positive, sine is negative, then tan will also be negative. This is the fourth quadrant. Now, how cast? Where is cast? That's C A S T. Some of you might think it's very lame, but that's what it is. So that's cast diagram. Over here in the quadrant one, all are positive, all trig functions, whereas only sine, only tan in the third quadrant, and in the fourth quadrant, only cosine functions and C A S T. Just remember this. But when you're writing, don't start from here or here, it should start from down C. A S T C for cosine, all sine and tan. Now we move on to the problem. Let's look at this problem. Find the exact value of cos theta if sine theta is one fourth and is between ninety degrees and less than one uh, one eighty degrees. Now you can solve these problems even directly in the calculator method, which I'll tell you later. But let's solve one problem properly. Now, which is the formula that connects these? When I think of cos and sine, which uh, which is it? Pythagorean identity connects them. It's basically sine squared theta plus cos squared theta equals 1. This is from the identities. Now, please remember, before we continue further, you must memorize all these formulas. Otherwise, you cannot solve this. Please take time. Go through them. Write them all once and understand them. See, if you make a pattern and understand them in your mind, you will never forget it. So try to remember it in a pattern so that you'll always remember it. Now let's go ahead and solve here sine squared. Now what you do is substitute, substitute the value which is given. That is sine is given, right? So it's one fourth and it's whole squared plus cos squared theta equals one. What is the square of it? It will be. 1 by 16. So I'll take this to the other side. It'll be cos squared theta equals 1 minus this 1, uh, 1 fourth the whole square. It'll be 1 by 16. Okay, so I'll directly write it over here. It'll be 1 by 16. Now then, you can easily solve this up. It'll be cos squared theta is equal to, it'll be 16, that is 15 uh, 15 because it'll be 16 16 by 16 16 minus 1 is 15 by 16 or 1 minus 1 16th of it so how much will remain 15 parts of 16 will remain now take the square root over there cos theta is equal to square root of 15 by 16 now over here above you can directly put this in calculator now you can't simplify it it is just 
root 15 up but down it will be 4 but remember to write plus or minus why because you are taking the square root but it's not over see it is not plus or minus it's only one specific value how do you know you must know which quadrant it falls in 90 to 180 means it's from 0 90 180 it's in the second quadrant and, uh, and we saw just now it's c a s t that means second quadrant only sine is positive yes sine was positive over here but what about the co uh, cosine it's negative so cosine is negative tan is negative so this value answer is cos theta equals to minus root 15 divided by 4 that would be the final answer so it is minus root 15 by 4 that's the cos theta value this is how we can easily solve it up now let's see the calculator method as well the shortcut method please take out your calculators for this here you have sine theta right how to find the angle theta just take sine inverse on both the sides sine and sine inverse cancels you will have sine inverse one fourth so it's basically sine inverse of one fourth gives you the angle theta right this is the answer now here the problem is if you write this answer theta is 14.4775 degrees and then put it you will get an answer but it won't be very very accurate so what i would suggest is whatever the theta value save it as the answer now it's the answer it means it's saved as the answer okay now all you do is this theta value put it as cos answer that is the theta value instead of typing this put the answer only once okay uh, still it's not very accurate because uh, uh, I thought you will get the whole number the fraction for some cases Yes, you will definitely get a fraction, but in this case you won't get now. This is the answer cos theta is how much cos theta is 0 0.9682 Okay, that's enough 8245 Now how would you check the answer if it is an options then you can easily check this out by solving it up or else you can even write this even if it's writing this is also the correct answer but if you do this method you will get in terms of fractions now if i show you square root 15 divided by 4 is 0.6968245 and it goes on but the problem is it won't give you the sign this is for the quad first quadrant whatever we get over here generally or you know it's a random quadrant sorry it depends here if it was negative then the answer would change but now you need to look into the quadrant and remember the cast diagram that is second quadrant only sign is positive so cosine is negative so the answer would be minus cos theta equals minus 0 0.9682 that would be the final answer now we will see um, there's a check you can use the check by using the calculator that is just what we okay that is the shortcut method which i just told you about um, yeah that's it i think so but they have done it differently you don't need to uh, bother about the checks as long as you do it thoroughly it's fine you know um, you can do the calculator method and check the answer as well now here we have another problem now which identity would you use which identity just take uh, just you can pause the video and think about it now we saw three identities in Pythagorean that was it's better to write the identities first because these generally will not be given in the exam so first one is sine squared theta plus cos squared theta equals one this is very easy to remember the next one is basically tan square theta plus 1 equals secant square theta now here we can't use this but we have to use cot that is cotangent square theta plus 1 is equal to cosecant square theta plus 1 this is it now substitute the cot value it is minus 3 fifths plus 1 is equal to oh i'm uh, yeah i've written correct i thought this was cosecant i got confused okay now don't forget to square this which i forgot now i remember 
and minus becomes positive because it's squared and we will have 9 by 25 plus 1 that is equal to uh, c s c squared theta now nine parts added to uh, 21 it would be basically 25 plus 9 is um, 34 by 25 that is equal to c s c square theta now you can take the square root over here and over here it's the whole square root sorry your answer will be square root 34 divided by 5 but this should be plus or minus now let's see this is what cosecant now in the cast diagram just a while ago we saw cosine all sine and tan right now here the reciprocal also works if it is sine then even cosecant works if it's tan cot also works and if it is cos then secant is positive over here these are all positives over here okay we are all so this is the thing now let's see this is the quadrant three one two three sorry four three sixties it's fourth here cos and secant is positive whereas we have cosecant so the answer would be not plus it's only minus so that would be the answer over here the final answer is sorry minus root 34 by 5 that is what we got from the cast diagram now i will directly show it in the calculator as well all you need to do is use the trigonometry function and find theta but can you directly use this no you need to find the reciprocal instead of cot you can write it as tan now how would you solve this don't put this directly in calculator you can just do tan would be tan theta is equal to reciprocal of this minus 5 by 3 if cot is 3 by 5 tan is 5 by 3 and write the negative sign over here both the cases so now just take tan inverse of negative 5 divided by 3 and close the bracket and that would be the answer that is negative 59 point uh, negative 59 uh, degrees or so now please don't uh, write this individually just take the same thing and substitute in cosecant what is cosecant remember cosecant is 1 by sine the theta angle is in answers and now you can solve it it's negative 1.166 now if i solve this over here root 34 divided by 5 and it was minus sign here it will be the same answer what we got negative 1.166 that's how we can easily check the answer or solve it directly as well now we move on to the next problem here it's the same quadrant the last quadrant 270 degrees to 360 that is the fourth quadrant and we have cos and sine I will directly do this in the calculator method and then we can check the answer. Here all you need to do is cos inverse of one thirds. So it will be 70.52 and so on. Now just put this instead of sine. And that is 0 0.9428. Now you can see this, see the answer over here. The answer is root 2. 2 root 2 by 3. Now, why negative? Because sine is not positive in the fourth quadrant, only cosine. So, minus, this will be minus, but this is the same answer. See, 2 by 3 over here, there's minus root 2. And the answer will be 0 0.9428. Just the minus sign is added. Why? Because it's in the fourth quadrant. Same thing can be done everywhere over here. Now, you can see this is in the third quadrant 180 to 270 so what happens over here is sine inverse you can directly find sine inverse and solve this it'll be negative 2 by 7 don't forget the sign and the answer is negative 16.60 now what you do is secant is 1 by cos so 1 divided by cos of the answer now here it's a 1.04 so the answer must okay one more thing you're getting positive no in the second quadrant only tan is positive so this must be negative as well now if you solve this up over here 7 by 3 root 5 here it will be 1.04 same answer so this is how we can easily solve it up 
And that's about the first part. This is how we solve these trigonometric identities. We can solve the trigonometric values here. And now, simplifying expressions. Here we need to know the formulas. We need to substitute and solve. There is no simplifying. There is no direct method. You have to solve it. So how do we simplify an expression is, um, you know, you need to substitute the formulas and simplify as much as possible. We'll look into a problem. Okay, there is a shortcut method. I'll tell you in a while. Um, there is shortcut formula for the shortcut methods you using calculator, but it will work only if you know the options. Otherwise, you can't use the direct method. Now, here, how you start solving is, Start substituting the formulas. Start, start substituting whichever you know. Sign, let, let it be. You need to sometimes solve this as well. But generally, leave sine or cos or tan. Try, if you see cosecant or cot, just apply the formulas over there. Cosecant is 1 by sine here. Divided by cot is what? 1 by tan. So 1 divided by tan theta. Now here this and this cancels. Now 1 divided by tan means it will reciprocate, right? It will come, whatever is there, this is in the denominator of the about term and this comes in the numerator. So it will be tan theta. That's it. This is cancelled. It's 1, right? Tan theta into 1 by 1. That's it. This is the answer. You can directly solve it. Only it was uh, cosecant 1 by sine cancels out and over here substitution by 1 by tan and that's the answer. It will be tan theta. Now I will tell you the calculator method, how to do it. Let's take out our calculators. Here, in this given equation, you need to substitute it. Sine, instead of theta, take any value. But don't take uh, 45, 90. Just try to avoid them because sometimes there will be zeros or asymptotes in such cases. So what I done, I generally do is I will go with 15. 15 will not do any harm. Multiplied with cosecant. How do you get cosecant? It's 1 by sine and the angle is same 15 divided by cot is what 1 by tan 15 close the bracket that is equal to what? Uh, 2 negative root 3 right now substitute 15 degrees instead of tan 2 minus root 3 must be the answer. Let's check 15 over here and yes, it's 2 minus root 3. So this is how only one particular answer will be the will be matching for a particular value of theta. Take theta as 10, 15, 20 like that. Don't take 45, 90. Avoid such values. Here also it's the same thing. Matching the answer is very simple in the calculator. I won't repeat the calculator method again and again. Now we will start solving this. Here, see, in such cases, it's very hard to understand what all needs to be simplified, right? As a thumb rule, we generally leave sine and cos and everything be simplified. But now when I'm looking over here, I can understand these two are being multiplied. Over here, even if I simplify, there's nothing I can do until I simplify the above. See, minus is there and these two, just simplify these two. Because when, when I look at them, I realize cosecant is 1 by sine. And tan is sine by cos. So sine, sine cancel. So what I'll do is I'll just substitute them over here. Sine square will become, sorry, tan square will become sine square theta by cos square theta into 1 by sine square theta minus 1 divided by, let me leave this for now. Secant square, let me leave it. Let's cancel this off. What you're remaining is 1 by cos square theta minus 1 divided by secant square theta if you remember the uh, if you remember the reciprocal identity 1 by cos square theta is secant square theta minus 1 divided by secant square theta now look at the above term if you remember the pythagorean identity you will know tan square theta plus 1 is equal to secant square theta now if you take this one to the other side what happens tan squared theta equals secant squared theta minus 1, isn't it? So here, instead of this numerator, I will just write tan squared theta divided by secant squared theta. Now we need to simplify more. How? This can be split up. 
tan is basically sine squared theta by cos squared theta divided by what is secant? Secant is 1 by cos squared theta. Now from here, you can just cancel these cos and cos or I'll just take it to the other side. It is sine squared theta divided by cos squared theta and this denominator when it comes up it becomes multiplication and the denominator here comes up as cos squared theta divided by 1 cancels you're finally remaining with sine squared theta so this is the correct answer so you can see after all the substitution you'll come with sine squared theta as the answer now how we can solve is uh, you can put some theta value over here directly, put in the calculator and solve. You can do it by yourself. You have done it already. Or this is the substitution. You don't need to do very, very long substitution. Just substitute it. Simplify how much you can and you will get the answer. Okay. So as long as you, you have, you know, sign. See, now you can't simplify further, right? Sometimes you might have two terms, but you can't simplify. You can stop over there. But if you can... Try to substitute the formulas and solve. See, I simplified here. I got tan squared by secant squared. But I know tan squared is sine squared by cos and secant is 1 by cos. So you need to apply them and simplify further. So that's the answers over here. And what else over here? We got the similar problem. So please do try this by yourselves. Now, don't go to uh, do anything over here. Look at this one right side when i look at it i remember pythagoras theorem there is no square here there is square that is we know sine squared theta plus cos squared theta equals one now cos squared is to the other side so it is sine squared theta equals one minus cos squared theta so here instead of one minus cos squared i'll just write sine squared theta divided by sine theta now here the square and this cancels theta so you are having secant theta into sine theta now what else can you do what is secant basically secant is 1 by cos isn't it multiplied by sine theta what is sine by cos tan theta this is the simplified version okay don't just stop over here secant into sine no apply uh, apply the reciprocal identity and now I can see sine by cos is tan. That's the final answer. And over here you can see, okay, yeah, one second. That was the final answer, tan theta. These are the formulas which we have applied. You can check this also with the calculator method by taking any theta value. That's how we solve this. Here in the real world problem, we have been told the amount of light that a source provides to a surface is called illuminance. The illuminance E in the food candles on a surface is related to the distance R in feed from the light source. This candle is the unit of uh, intensity uh, illuminance, you know. The formula secant theta equals I by E R squared, where I is the intensity, intensity of the light. Sorry, I told uh, unit of illuminance, which is wrong. Illuminance is E, that's a lighting. Candles is I, okay, intensity is unit. So the intensity of the light source measured in candles and theta is the angle between the light beam and the line perpendicular to the surface which is used in situations of lighting. Basically the angle which is formed, you know, the angle in which the lighting is kept is the uh, theta. So we here solve the formula in terms of E. You can see this formula, right, secant theta. We have to just solve it for E. I'll just do it over here. So what happens here is take E to the other side. It will be E equals I by take secant theta to the inside over here. Secant theta R squared. That's it. That is the answer. I guess one minute. Let's check. Yeah, in terms of E. Yeah, that's it. That's the answer you can see. Oh, I forgot. See, I just wrote secant squared. What is 1 by secant squared? I forgot to do that. That is basically 1 by secant is cos. So it is I cos theta by R squared. Okay. You don't need to do all these many steps. Just one step you would have got the answer. But I just missed the main important step. It's just taking secant up. It's I cos theta by R squared. Now here they are asking is this equation part equivalent to R squared? Okay. Is this answer same as this? Let's simplify, okay? 
Now, when we are simplifying, we need to get, try to get this. So what do you do is, take e to one side and simplify the right side. Let me take e to the other side, it will be e equals i, tan is what? Sine by, not secant, sorry, it's sine theta by cos theta into cos theta divided by, I'll take this r down, r squared. Cos cos cancels, it is i, oh look over here, I thought it will be equal but it's not. I sine theta by r squared. Over here, we got I cos theta by r squared. No, they are not equal. See, this is the no, the equations are not equivalent to each other because one is having sine theta, over here, one more is having cos theta. Here, rewrite cot square theta minus tan square theta. How about you try this by yourselves in terms of sine theta? So, again, it's same, just simple things what we have been doing. You can try pausing the video and doing it yourself. You can even, if the answers are given, you can use the calculator method. I just realized this is not multiplication. I Initially, when I saw the problem, I thought, okay, these are reciprocal, just, you know, inverse of each other. It's very easy. But now I realized it's minus. So it's going to be a little tough and everything in terms of sine is required. So let's start solving this. How can you solve this is simplify them. Cot will become, you know, it is sine, uh, sorry, cos squared theta by sine squared theta minus tan is sine squared theta by cos squared theta. Okay, I hope this much is clear, very basic. Now these are reciprocal identities. We have done this in the previous videos, previous lessons. So what we, the simpler way is just multiply this denominator up and down here and this up and down. So when you're multiplying the denominator of each term to the opposite sides, both the denominators are, you know, this denominator is multiplied in the numerator and denominator. So what happens is the denominators are equal. So we can just write them up together in the sense directly I can write sine squared theta cos squared theta. Now this multiplied here would be cos to the power 4 theta minus sine to the power 4 theta. If you're getting confused, you can watch the previous videos on rational functions, solving rational equations. We have done this before. And now we are remaining with this. Now see over here, we can't leave uh, cos over here. We need to get everything in terms of sine. So what is uh, the Pythagorean identity I can use over here? sine squared theta plus cos squared theta equals 1. So I need in terms cos in terms of sine. So take the sine to the other side will be cos squared theta equals 1 minus sine squared theta. So everything must basically be in what? Be in terms of sine. So I should not have cos. Cos is equal to this much. So substitute over here. Now look over here to the power 4. So I'll square both the sides. If I square this, it's going to be cos to the power 4 theta equals 1 minus sine squared theta whole square. It's a minus b the whole square identity in this case. Now let's just substitute everything what we have got here. So it's 1 minus sine squared theta the whole square minus sine to the power 4 theta divided by sine squared theta into 1 minus sine squared theta. So what happens here is it's a minus b the whole square. I hope you remember this. The identity is a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. So here square it up. It will be 1. 1 squared is 1 minus 2 times 1 is 2 into sine squared. It will be 2 sine squared theta plus b squared will be sine square and squared will be power 4 theta minus sine to the power 4 theta divided by multiply this inside will be sine squared theta minus sine to the power 4 theta now this and this cancels yeah, that's okay. You can take common uh, theta out if you want. Let's just try, but it won't simplify here. So you're remaining with 1 minus 2 sine squared theta in the numerator. Denominator, it will be sine squared theta is removed out. You're remaining with 1 minus sine squared theta. 
or you can leave it like this only. So that will be the final answer, I believe, because everything is in terms of sign. So that's it. We can stop over there. Okay, they have not done this simplification. This previous step only they have left it. But you can do this as well if you want. So that is how we basically solve this, you know. It's a bit lengthy, but, you know, uh, once you... You know, once you practice it, you will understand it. Just make sure you know the identities. These are all the formulas which we uh, which we require to solve this problem. So that's the end of this particular lesson. I hope you have found this helpful. Please do subscribe to my channel. This would mean a lot. Please do subscribe. And please do share it among your friends who might find this helpful. Until the next video, take care and happy learning. Bye-bye for now.